Hi, this is Ros Atkins with you on World Have Your Say. Now, FIFA is trending as a story all around the world, and the reason is that Sepp Blatter and his rival for the FIFA presidency, Mohammed bin Haman, will now both be appear appearing before the FIFA Ethics Committee this weekend. We're going to get the latest developments on that and your reaction to this bitter feuding at the top of football's governing body. Now, that's one of the main stories in the world today. The other one grabbing your attention is the situation with Ratko Mladic. He's going to be extradited, says a Serbian judge, but Mladic's lawyers plan to appeal, saying that the former Bosnian Serb military commander is too ill to stand trial. But do you think his health should be a consideration? If you don't want to make an international call, text country code 4477-86206080 and put call me in your message. In the second half of the show, we're going to be live from a Spanish bar in the centre of London where Manchester United and Barcelona fans are gathering ahead of the Champions League final tomorrow. And of course, we'll talk to them about that and about the situation at FIFA. So if you want to join in that conversation, call us up now and we'll log your call for the second half of the programme. But the first half is going to be uh, devoted to Ratko Mladic. Let me introduce you to two guests who are joining us. Misha Vladimirov is an international criminal lawyer and is live with us from The Hague. Hello. Hello. Hi. And we good also evening. Good evening. And we also have Tony Kelly in Glasgow. He's Professor of Human Rights and is the solicitor that represents Abdul Basit Ali Mohammed al Magrahi, the only person who's been convicted of the Lockerbie bombings. And of course, all of you listening will know uh, that Mr. al Magrahi uh, was released on grounds of ill health. Well, Tony and Misha, listening to you talk, are two more guests who I'd like to bring in, and then I'll. I'll drop out of it again. Um, David is joining us from Prague. Um, he was a war photographer and he's now with us live on the phone. Hi, David. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We've also got Stefan, who's a Serbian law student uh, on the phone from Nish in Serbia. Hi, Stefan. Hi, thank you very much for calling me. Well, Stefan, why don't you lead us off and then David, Misha and Tony feel free to come in. Stefan, okay. do you have any concerns about Mladic's health? I have to tell you that the majority of people watching and listening and following us online um, don't seem at all concerned. They say, however ill he is, get him into court. Is that how you feel? Um, I, I don't have uh, um, uh, exact information is uh, Ratko Mladic uh, health enough to be extradited Hague Tribunal, but we heard in Serbia that he is fit enough to be extradited, and I uh, do believe in Serbian uh, justice sector, and I think that the Serbian doctors uh, done their job good. Right. Perhaps just to sh shape up one's other's mind, if a man called Demjanjuk in his 90s uh, was considered to be fit to stand a trial under a German system which is different to the uh, common law system because the defendant does participate in the trial itself has a right of direct communication with the court while in the and, and just let's just remind everyone: this is the the gentleman in his nineties who was found guilty of of helping to run a uh, a Nazi death camp concentration yeah, camp. Yeah, right. Yeah, Mladic is sixty nine. His health may be bad. That I'm not going to to have any comment on that because I simply don't know. I read the papers, and that's all I can say. Well, he was reported well, cognizant when he was arrested. Yeah. Sure, but it's for the the tribunal to, to establish whether he's fit or not. As, as long as um, independent advice has not been received from uh, medical ex experts, so far these are, let's say, part in a position, and I respect them. It may be utterly true, but yet we don't know for sure. Yeah, I think it's a question of degree. I mean, I don't think you can simply point to someone who's 90 and say that they were held are deemed fit enough to stand trial uh, in a particular court in Germany, and this guy's 69, ergo he must stand trial. It's a, it's a question of degree, and it has to be informed by expert reports upon his physical and mental health, and that will all feed into a determination, I would imagine, before the tribunal ultimately Absolutely. is going to trial, to see whether he is fit enough to stand trial, that is, is able to endure the trial process, which is going to be long and rigorous, and is able to effectively instruct his solicitors and counsel in relation to putting yeah. forward his instructions about what happened and to do that throughout the course of the trial. I don't know. I, I don't really feel so bad if he stands trial. I mean, if he makes it through the trial or not. 
8,000 yeah. people in Srebrenica didn't have a chance to stand trial. They just got machine gunned in the back. Yeah, well, if I can, not, you can't really it's not, not really the point, isn't it? I mean, exactly. the whole exactly. point is whether there's a twofold task, whether he is physical and mentally fit for the trial or not. And that's what they have to consider the court. And, I mean, we all sympathize with anyone who uh, suffers because of brothers, fathers, cousins, nephews, and all that. But um, as long as that's not a real test, let's not be concerned with it, because it's, at the end of the day, it's not relevant. But the, well, you say it's not relevant, but your conversation is reminding me a great deal of conversations we had on World Have Your Say after Osama bin Laden was killed, because some of our listeners said, we don't really care whether due process was seen to be done, we don't really mind if, if this was the normal way of dealing things, but dealing with things, because what he was accused of was so serious, it put him in a different category, and some people feel the same way um, about Mladic, they're, they're not concerned. David, is that your view? I, the guy's a war criminal. He, he, he's responsible for shelling Sarajevo. I got wounded in Sarajevo. A friend of mine was killed next to me from a shell that fell down from a Serbian mortar on the hills in 1992. Uh, he, he was responsible for the market massacre, if you will. Uh, I just have very little sympathy for him at all. It, for me, he's like one of the Nazis who was, behind the, who was responsible for the uh, massacre of the Jews in Belarus and Poland. I don't think it's a matter of war. I don't think it's a matter of having sympathy. If I can jump in in the... Tony, come in here, and then the others feel free to come in afterwards. It's not a matter of having sympathy or otherwise with them. Um, Of course, these people who stand convicted of these horrible crimes are are not deserving of our sympathy. But at the moment, we're still at the stage of allegation. And I know that you're satisfied as to his guilt, but I think a fair procedure means that the international community can stand up at the end of it and point to this man and say he's been convicted after due process. And... He is not, we are not uh, equivalent to him, and uh, if, if that's the case that he's guilty, we're not equivalent to him in, in the, the um, terrible massacres that he's done and carried out without the, 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 any fairness or any question of any... But the point is, Tony, the you're, you're saying, bear with the process, let's get to the end of the prosecution, let's see what the verdict is. But Misha, the frustration so many of our listeners have is when they point to trials that take place in The Hague... They say they never seem to finish. You don't seem to get any convictions. The International Criminal Court hasn't convicted anyone in the past eight years. Yeah, that's an interesting question for someone from the civil law jurisdiction because our trials are much uh, quicker. But I'm not here to, p- p- to promote my own uh, system. I only say that these international trials, we should take in consideration that the witnesses come from far. Mm-hmm. There is a different language. You have to translate everything what the witness say, you have to translate all the documents, the documents have to be collected on location, you have to bring them to, to The Hague. This is totally not comparable to anything around the corner in your local court. It's totally different. So it takes time. The magnitude of these, these uh, cases and the mm-hmm. indictments is totally different. So as long as you maintain before the ICTY a common law type of proceedings where you you require direct evidence in court i know it has been mitigated a bit Mm -hmm. into a more relaxed system where documentary evidence is more acceptable but yet it's dominantly direct evidence as long as you 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 want that it takes time. It takes so you time. say it takes time. It's interesting. I was chatting with a, a QC who uh, who defended Milosevic, and I was asking him, how long do you think this will take when Mladic comes to trial? And he says, it'll probably take four to five years from now to get uh, a guilty or a not guilty verdict. And he said, that is completely reasonable. Misha, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Misha Vladimirov's an international criminal lawyer in The Hague. I'm only saying goodbye to you, Misha, because we have uh, four lines at World Have Your Say, and I know that lots of people are phoning up, and um, we should bring a couple of other people into the conversation. While we're doing that, Tony, David and Stefan, let me ask you about the reaction towards Serbia over the past 24 hours compared 
with the reaction towards Pakistan in the days that followed the news that Osama bin Laden had been killed. Many people were furious with Pakistan. How could it have been possible that Osama bin Laden was living so close to a military compound? I don't hear the same level of criticism towards Serbia, despite the fact this man has been living for 16 years inside Serbia's borders. David, do you think Serbia deserves more criticism? I absolutely think Serbia deserves more criticism. I think that they knew where he was. I think they knew where where Cardis was. And I think they were just hiding him until they had enough uh, opportunity to, to get him out or until the government changed. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I bear a lot of antipathy towards Serbia, unfortunately. Stefan? Um, I need to disagree. I think that Serbia... Uh, does not deserve criticism. Serbia yesterday showed that Serbia is ready to face with the recent history uh, and uh, in the Balkans. And I think that the Serbian government and the Serbian president clearly shows that Serbia are ready to cooperate with the Hague Tribunal. And I think that uh, the reaction in Serbia was uh, quite normal. As you know, there was no a big demonstration in the big cities. And it clearly shows that Serbia and the Serbian people are ready to face with the recent history. Tony, what's your view of this? Well, I think it's pretty complicated, isn't it? I mean, there was lots of criticisms of Pakistan because they, um, in the minimum, they acquiesced in bin Laden uh, continuing to reside there. And in Serbia, it's much more complicated because of the residents of Serbia and their ambiguous view of, of um, this particular individual and what he did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I heard people earlier on in the radio um, saying that this was a, a hero, not someone who should be prosecuted. And I think politically it's much more sophisticated and much more nuanced. Obviously, the other thing is that for Serbia, pressure was brought to bear upon them, political pressure brought mm -hmm. to bear, so that there was a sanction still in place until... Or, this or it's their desire up. to get into the EU. Exactly. That's the, that's the political pressure and the political imperative that was brought to bear upon them. Um, that sort of thing was not working, was not capable of being brought to bear upon Pakistan. Talking about the EU, uh, World Politics Review has tweeted, the arrest of Mladic gives the Serbian president Tadic a boost, but it's not Serbia's last step towards EU accession. It was interesting, uh, the BBC's Chris Morris, our correspondent in Brussels, was making that point very strongly yesterday, saying it may have shifted Serbia a little way along the path to joining the European Union, but it's definitely not a done thing. And Min has tweeted us, by the way, if you want to tweet and get us to pick up your tweets, just use the hashtag WHYS. Min says, just because he's an old man doesn't mean he's now innocent of genocide and other crimes. And uh, uh, yeah, sure, can, can I can... Connie in Facebook says, let him stand trial, age or illness has got nothing to do with this. Stefan in Greece, a bit more sympathetic, just texted us to say, Ratko just tried to protect his country and his people. Well, let's bring out another person to speak with you, Tony, David and Stefan. Petter uh, is with us from Belgrade. Petter, what's your view of what's happened today? Um, good evening to everybody. I, uh, I've been sort of following the news uh, I think most of my compatriots have of the, the past day. Um, I think uh, too much emphasis is being put on the fact that uh, some pressure has been put on Serbia to uh, find and locate uh, Mladic. I think some, uh, some things have to be made clear here. First of all, uh, although he has been officially in hiding for 16 years, it's only about 10 years since the uh, democratic change has happened in Serbia that uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the government has actually started looking for him. Ten years, Secondly, ten years is still a long time, though. Uh, well, uh, if you look at, at, at the U.S. and the fact that with all the military might and, and technology, they weren't able to uh, get Osama bin Laden for mm. uh, close to 10 years, then, then I, I think it's... Uh, perfectly okay that Serbia wasn't able to do it uh, in the same period of time. Good to speak to you, Petter. Thanks for your call from Belgrade. Um, here's a point for you, Tony Kelly, and if people are just um, turning on, you're a professor of human rights, but you're also uh, the solicitor who represents Abdul Basit Ali Mohamed al Magrahi, who uh, was convicted of the Lockerbie bombings. Um, Swalka has tweeted us to say, sometimes justice delayed is actually justice denied. Do you have some sympathy with people who feel that so much time has passed now that, that somehow, even if he were convicted, it would have less impact than it might have done in the 90s. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously.
obviously if the trial takes place closer to the, in time to the allegation, then clearly it has much more force. But I would imagine that, that the victims of these horrific crimes, if a conviction is returned, would uh, draw some comfort from that. Obviously mm-hmm. there's some um, sort of distance in time from when these events actually occurred and in between times the, the perpetrator may well have been at liberty and that's not comforting but ultimately if um, some sort of punishment is brought to bear upon um, the person who is convicted then I'm sure justice will be seen to be done. What's your view of this David? You experienced the uh, consequences of Maric's actions. You were in Sarajevo when it was being bombed. What's your feeling about the length of time that's passed? Will that have any impact on your emotions when he's on trial? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I, does it does it make a difference to you? You've 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 lived the consequ with the consequences of Mladic's actions. The fact that it's taken this long and the trial has not yet begun does that make a difference? Is is justice delayed to some extent? Justice denied? No, I don't think so. I think as long as they get him to court and they put him on trial and all the hideousness comes out and he gets to relive it. I mean, the unfortunate thing is that many of his accusers will have already passed away from from old age or whatever they're no longer around so they can't confront their tormentor if you will uh i think that's bad but on the other hand it's good to get him to trial what about you stefan um i am i'm not uh, quite sure but i think so that uh, the in the end of the day uh, the justice will uh, came and i think so that uh, it's very important this ju- this uh, trial uh, will be very important for reconciliation in the Balkans. And I think uh, that the, all people in the Balkans, through the Hague Tribunal, need to see what actually happened in the Balkans during the past war. And I do believe that it, this, uh, this trial, in the end of the day, will bring the justice. Stefan, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time today. Stefan was on the phone from Niche in Serbia. Let's bring in uh, Branislav, who's also in Serbia. Branislav, tell us where you are, first of all.